Doing well in your career but looking to do better? At DBS, we want you to get to where you want to go with part-time postgraduate, evening degrees and professional diploma courses taught by people as successful at what they do as they are at teaching it. Kickstart your career with real-world learning. Apply today at dbs.ie. The Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Your kitchen linoleum probably gets more steady wear than any other floor in the house, and yet it's so easy to keep it looking beautiful. Just use Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Your linoleum will be brighter and cleaner, and your kitchen will be a more cheerful place to work. The new glow coat shines nearly twice as bright as ever before. And as you know, the brighter the shine, the cleaner the kitchen. Glow coat makes floor cleaning problems simple, too. Dust, dirt, and spilled things can be whisked off a glow-coated surface with just a wipe of a damp cloth. Johnson's self-polishing glow coat protects your linoleum from wear and scuffing. That shining coat of hard, gleaming wax actually keeps your feet off the floor. You walk on glow coat, not on the linoleum. No wonder it makes the linoleum last longer. Make your kitchen brighter, more cheerful. Use Johnson's self-polishing glow coat to bring out the beauty of your home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the home. Did you ever get a circular in the mail that said, and I probably misquote, we pay big money for old books. Well, it's that sort of thing that has sent our Mr. McGee of 79 Wistful Vista pursuing many a wild goose. Listen to him now as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. Hey, Molly, did you see this circular that just come in the mail? It says there's a fortune in books. I don't believe it. Uncle Dennis ran one for several months, and he spent all his profits bailing himself out of jail. Oh, no. Oh, I don't mean handbooks. <laughs> This guy ain't a bookie. He's a collector. So was Uncle Dennis. He'd collect $100 and hand it right over to a bailiff. I told him a hundred times no, he shouldn't no, be... No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand, kiddo. Neither do I. Look, this circular says thousands of people who read this circular have books in their attics and basements which are eagerly sought by collectors. Oh, books. Yeah, books. I wonder if we got any book in the attic which would be eagerly sought by a collector. It would have to be kind of rare, I suppose. Well, we've got some up there by Mary Roberts' rhinestone, and, uh... <laughs> yes, and there's some by Earl Stanley Gander up there. Uh, gardener, Snooky. A gander is a buck duck. <laughs> Besides, by rare books, I mean books that are scarce, old books that you can't buy anymore. Them are the ones that are eagerly sought by collectors. For instance, this circular says there's a great demand right now for Horatio Alger books. Oh, and... Horatio Alger. Yeah. <laughs> Heavenly days. <laughs> Who'd want to read that stuff now? Yeah. Phil the Fiddler, Paul the Peddler, Bill the Butcher. Which reminds me, did you pay the butcher bill? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but listen, I got an idea. I found $5 in an old sugar bowl today. Oh, good for you. Now, my idea is that you if I... You can have it if you'll forget this idea you have. Well, you don't even know what it is. No, but you never had one yet that cost us less than $15, so we'll save 10 <laughs> But this will make a lot of dough, kiddo. Listen, the circular says that Horatio Alger books are eagerly sought by collectors. You see where it says that right here? Eagerly sought by collectors. Yes, but... I know where I can lay my chubby little mitts on 50 of them today, in half an hour. What good is a project to us that lasts more than a half an hour? <laughs> I get this, baby. I happened to drop into the book nook next to the Bonton this morning, and yeah. on the shelf that says, Any book here for 25 cents, there were dozens of Alger books. Did he write that many? My gosh, he must have wrote a hundred of them. All with the same plot, too, practically. Really? There's always this poor but honest lad, disgustingly wholesome, who saves a banker's daughter from a runaway horse. He refuses to accept a gold watch as a reward, so the banker gives him a job as a messenger boy at 50 cents a week, out of which Thrifty Joe saves 37 cents. <laughs> In 110 pages, he saves up enough money to marry the banker's daughter and gets the gold watch for a wedding present. 
The snide little twerp plays it smart all the way. Uh, sounds a little dull, doesn't yeah. it? Didn't he ever write one where the boy saves a horse's daughter from a runaway banker? Huh? <laughs> or a banker's horse from a runaway daughter? No. No, but in Tom the Boot Black... Yeah. Uh-oh, now, now, not a word about this to anybody, Snooky. This is my private gold mine, and I don't want any claim jumpers. I'll be mum, chum. Come in. Oh, hello there, Mr. Old Timer. Oh, hi, Old Timer. I'd ask you to sit down, but we're on our way downtown to the book nook. Gotta buy some books. Good for you, Johnny. Nothing like reading good books. <laughs> I'll never forget what one of my old teachers said about reading. Uh, what did she say, Mr. Old Timer? Well, sir, daughter, she just stood there with the sun streaming in the schoolhouse window, casting a kind of a soft glow over her head and says... You little whippersnapper, you will finish reading A Tale of Two Cities or you'll be in the sixth grade for the next ten years. <laughs> Did you or were you? I was. <laughs> ah, but since then I'd done a lot of reading, kids. Just last night I was sitting in my room reading to myself in the dark and all at once... Wait, ho, ho, wait a minute now. How can you read in the dark? Why, that's simple, daughter. Just turn on the light. <laughs> But if you turned on the light, you weren't in the dark. Oh, yes, I was. The bulb was burned out, Johnny. <laughs> well, if you turned on the light and it was burned out, how could you still read? Had a flashlight. Oh. <laughs> well, that's different. Nope. The batteries was dead. Oh. <laughs> now, this is nonsensical, Mr. Old Timer, sitting there reading in a dark room. What were you reading? A neon hosiery sign across the street, daughter. <laughs> I love neon. Ever stop to think what neon spells backwards? It spells no one. And no one loves neon like I do. Oh. <laughs> I, some of them colors... Now, if you'll best... excuse us, old-timer, we got to go down and buy some books. Aye, certainly, Johnny, and I'm proud of you for doing it. Though I don't care much for books myself. Started one last week and just had to quit it. Why? Too much printing in it. The pages was all full of words. <laughs> well, some books are like that, old-timer. You ought to try a book of cigarette papers. <laughs> well, this was the most mixed-up yarn I ever read, kids. Yeah? Started out with a character named Aardvark and a feller named Ab and just went no place from there. Well, who wrote the book? Oh, some fella named Webster. He'll never get any place, though. <laughs> He'll never get any place. His plots don't hold up. <laughs> that was Noah Webster, old-timer. He quit writing books after that and started a dance band. He did? Haven't you heard of Noah's Ork? Oh, dear. <laughs> Noah's Ork? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I heard yeah, it. I didn't think it would be. Hmm. Nope, the way I heard it, one feller says to tell the feller, say... He says, what do they mean when they say a man is presidential timber? Well, says Telefeller, they mean he can look green and act grown. He ain't too sappy or shady. He don't mind getting the bird. He knows when to bow and leave. And he can bark when necessary. He spends a lot of time on the stump. Keeps his trunk packed and falls the right way when they give him the axe. Well, so long, kid. <laughs> Billy Mills in the orchestra, and now is the hour.
Now, look, Snook. When we get in this book, Nook, we got to play it kind of cagey, see? We ain't the least bit interested in buying any old Horatio K. Alger books, see? Why, we are, too. That's huh? why we came down here, to buy up all the old Alger books he had. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, sure. That is what we come down here for, but we don't want the guy to know it, see? He'll hike the price on us. We got to act like we're not interested. Well, all right, but it seems a little dishonest. Huh? I'll probably blush every time he looks at me. <laughs> You do that. You look pretty when you blush. That'll that'll distract his attention off of me. Well, come on, let's go in. Heavenly days. Look at all the books. Mm-hmm. Who writes all those things? Mm-hmm. We certainly haven't had that many secretaries of state. <laughs> now, let's just pretend we're browsing, kiddo. Why pretend anything? The proprietor isn't paying any attention to us. Oh, no. You slip a ten-buck book under your coat and start to walk out. He don't know we're here like MacArthur don't know he's being mentioned as a candidate. <laughs> you try to take a book... Oh, that McGee, can... look who just came in. Mr. Williams, the weatherman. Hello, Mr. Williams. Oh, hi, Foggy, old man. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. If you'll pardon my saying so, it's lovely weather we're having, isn't it? Yes, it is, Mr. Williams. <laughs> you a book lover like us, Foggy? Yes, in a way, McGee. I'm also an author of sorts. Heavenly days, an author. Well... You mean you wrote a book, Mr. Williams? Yes, yes, I did. Hmm. It was about an expedition I made four years ago to the interior of Africa, studying equatorial weather. Very adventuresome trip, too. Hmm. Any trouble with natives, Fog? One of our members was boiled and eaten by cannibals. Oh. Ooh. Yes. yes, we buried his sun helmet and put a simple little marker over it. Stuart Jones, that was. How terrible. What did you write on the marker? Just one word. Stew. <laughs> How about wild game, Foggy? Oh, we had some splendid ones, McGee. One night I was holding a full house, aces over king. No, 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 I... no. Oh, oh. You mean animals. <laughs> well, one day in the dense jungle, I was taking humidity recordings when I was charged by an enraged bull elephant. Boy. I fled for my life, but tripped over a pygmy, fell, and fractured my hygrometer. Oh. Yes? Ooh. Yes, I did. As I lay there helpless, I saw this huge bull loom over me, ready to stamp out my life. Well, I'd have grabbed his tusk and tried to throw the bull. (laughs) I'm sure you would. Oh, my goodness. Uh, What happened, Mr. Williams? What'd you do? Well, suddenly a strange look came into the elephant's eyes. Gently, he wrapped his trunk about me and carried me tenderly back to camp. Oh, He put me lightly down on the grass, and before he left, he stood over me a moment with tears in his eyes, and with the soft tip of his trunk, caressed a dewy button I happened to be wearing. (laughs) Darn good thing for you, Foggy, they didn't have wild donkeys in Africa. (laughs) Yes. Well, I must be getting along. Good day, probably. So long, Foggy. I could have told that yarn a lot better. I'd have made it a laughing hyena instead of an elephant. Oh, 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 here comes the proprietor, Molly. Now, play it, Casey. All right. right. Uh, Hi, bud. Mind if we just browse around a little? No, it's quite all right, mister. Look around all you like. You uh, interested in fiction or nonfiction? Whichever Horatio Alger is, we're not interested in that. Oh, (laughs) Am I being cagey enough, McGee? <laughs> she likes detective stories, bud, but she always shuts her eyes when she comes to the murder part, so she never does seem to find oh, out... Oh, uh, excuse me, folks, there's my telephone. Now go ahead, Buster, we'll just browse around. Book nook. <laughs> yep, yep. No, ma'am, it ain't a cookbook and it ain't Crisco. It's the Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> now, don't mention it, ma'am. Sure get some dumb questions from folks. I'll bet you do it that, bud. Hey, are all these books down on this table selling for two bits? Well, to tell the truth, they're not selling at all. But I'm asking two bits for them. Oh. Well, if you folks want anything, now you just call. We will. Yeah. Oh, look, dearie, here's a whole pile of old Horatio Alger books, but who'd want any of those old things? Not us, I'll bet. No, we wouldn't want any of those old things. Well, hello there, pal. Hi, Molly. Thought I recognized those voices. Oh, hi, Omaha. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. What are you reading? Uh, That's a Western story. It's called Roaring Six Guns by Ramrod Riggs. You ever read it? No, I don't believe so, Junior. I got a new one last week, though, but it wasn't what I wanted. He bought a book called Longhorn Steers, yeah. Mr. Wilcox, and it turned out to be a book on how to play the trombone. 
Well, this ramrod Riggs really knows the old West. I just got to where Tex Vanguard, the hero, knocks a man down for insulting the new school teacher in front of the last chance saloon. Yeah, they all start out like that. He'll marry her on page 248. I doubt it very much. This is a man teacher. Oh, no. <laughs> Town was too tough for decent women. I see. Shall I read you some of it? Well... No, thanks, Omaha. I don't hey, think... Hey, just that... listen to this. This is real literature. Yeah? The motley crowd cowered before Black Pete's menacing guns mm. as he shot two faro dealers and leered at Klondike Kate, the gambler's daughter. Mm. Suddenly, a calm, gray-eyed figure sauntered up to the bar, and a hush fell over the room. I know. Martha Graham. <laughs> It was Tex Vanguard, U.S. Marshal from Dodge City, the terror of evildoers and bringer of law and order to the raw frontier. That's Randolph Scott. I'd know him any place. <laughs> Suddenly, Black Pete's gun barrel rose and Tex Vanguard found himself staring into the small, black, deadly tunnel which had snuffed out the life of your kitchen linoleum can be preserved and beautified so easily with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Uh, what? Hey, wait a minute. Is that in there? Huh? Oh, excuse me, I'm using a Johnson's Glow Coat Circular for a bookmark, and I must have jumped over to that. Oh. <laughs> anyway, anyway, the book says there was a blur of action as Vanguard went for his gun. Yeah. Four shots roared, and the lifeless figure of Black Pete slumped to the floor coverings of linoleum, which are protected by Johnson's Glow Coat, are so much easier to keep clean because still things are easily wiped up with a damp Mr. cloth. Mr. Wilcox, the story. Oh, yes, yes. Well, just at that moment, Tex Vanguard felt a gun muzzle prodding him in the back. And with no rubbing and no buffing, Loco dries to a handsome mirror like polish in 20 minutes or less. Hey, uh, hey, Waxy. Yes, pal. Just read quietly to yourself for a while, will you? Sure. We, we may want to read that book ourselves sometime. Yeah. And we want it to be a surprise when Tex Vanguard traps the rustlers in their hideaway and cleans them out with a damp cloth after shooting them full of glow coat. <laughs> Why, of course. Here, you take the book. But you haven't finished it, Waxy. Oh, I don't want to. I'd rather read the Johnson's Glow Coat Circular. To me, it's a lot more exciting. Oh. See you later, folks. <laughs> Hey, Molly, I got an idea. Yes? Look, you go to the other end of the store and start talking to the owner, see? Distract his attention so I can look over these algebra books. Too and late, dearie. Your... Here he comes. Huh? Oh, hey, Bob. These old algebra books are pretty junky looking. How much are they? Nickel apiece? Nope. Ten cents, mister. Oh. Frankly, they ain't worth it, but I can't handle them for any less. Hey, Molly, how about some of these old algebra books for a dime apiece? No, huh? we wouldn't want them. I should say not. Well, who would? Not me. <laughs> but I'll take them just to give you more room on the shelves, bud. Well, now, that's mighty neighborly of you, mister. Let me see. There's about uh, 108 of them up there. You can take the whole lot for $10. $8. $9. $9.50. $10? 10 11 And that's my last offer. <laughs> okay. $11. But you drive a hard bargain, mister. <laughs> well, I'll get some court bottle up. <laughs> King's Men and Two Things to Worry About. Worry, 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 worry. I've got me double trouble. Worry, 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 worry. My cares all come in bear. I got two things to worry about. Either you're mine or you're not. And if you're mine, I haven't got to worry. But on the other hand, if you're not, I got two things to worry about. Either you change or you don't. Now, if you change, I haven't got to worry. But on the other hand, if you don't, then pity me, watch me sink till I'm hanging on the brink. But before my worries all are over, I got two things to worry about. Either I live or I don't. And if I don't, I haven't got to worry. But on the other hand, if I do, there's two things to worry about. Me and you, just two little things to worry about. Either you're mine or you're not. Now, if you're mine, I haven't got to worry. But on the other hand, if you're not, then there's two little things to worry about. Neither you change or you don't. If you change, I haven't got to worry. But on the other hand, if you don't, then pity me, watch me sink till I teeter on the very brink. And then before my worries all are over, there's two little things to worry about. Either I live or I don't. Now if I don't, I haven't got to worry. But on the other hand, if I do, I've still got two things to worry about. One's me, the other is you. Worry, 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 worry about me. Home with 
of these books, what have you got? A sore arm from lugging these books. You'll find out what I got, though, when that book collector gets here. I phoned him from the drugstore and told him I had a collection of algebra books that was a collector's dream. I think you got your money's worth all right. The title's alone, you see. Oh, now stand back, kiddo. Here comes opportunity. Uh, come in. Oh, it's Dr. Gamble, Hello. McGee. Come in, doctor. Hello, Molly. And good day to you, drumhead. <laughs> Hi, Phil Pitcher. I thought you were somebody important, but come on in anyway. If I was somebody important, why would I be calling on you, Pop-Up? We thought you were a book collector, Doctor. He was expecting one. And why not? He's had every other kind of collector on his trail. <laughs> why, he's... Hey, where'd you get the pile of penny dreadfuls, dreadful? I bought them, Fatso, at the book nook next to the Bonton. There's a guy coming over here Let to buy these. Let me see these. those. Horatio Alger. You betcha. Great Scott, I haven't seen books like these since my kid days. You never had any kid days, and you know it. <laughs> you were born at the age of 42 with a gold probe in your mouth, and you've been... I... Aren't these titles wonderful, Molly? Look at this. Do or Die, Paul Pearson's Pluck, Boot Black to Banker. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a, a great one. title. <laughs> <laughs> All a boy had to do to get rich in those days was invest in a box of shoe polish and a brush and wait. <laughs> What's so different about that? Doc Gamble started out with a dollar watch and a calomel tablet, and look at him now. Oh, Mickey. That's not true, and he knows it. I had a thermometer, too, when I started out. <laughs> I'll say you had a thermometer. The only thermometer I ever saw that had three degrees of fever painted right on it. <laughs> you got rich with that thermometer. Now, McGee, stop it. Dr. Gamble isn't rich. Certainly not. Just handsome and talented. Oh, say, look at this one, Molly. Ned the Newsboy. There's the book that changed my whole career. Changed your career? What mm -hmm. happened? You cut your thumb turning the pages and decided to take up medicine? No, I was working as a fire watcher for the Forest Service, and while I was reading this book, 300 acres of timber burned up. <laughs> well, McGee expects these books to change his career, too, Doctor. We're going to be rich any minute now. Oh, I hope not. I like McGee just as he is. Do you really, Doc? Yes, I do. <laughs> Yes, I do, McGee. Dumb, floundering, inconsistent, rude, and uncouth. I'm as couth as you are. <laughs> when I think what you'd be like if you had money, I shudder. And when I shudder, walls crack for miles around. <laughs> oh, now, you wouldn't mind if we got wealthy, Doctor. We'd still come to you with our troubles. Yeah, and speaking of troubles, I never will forget the time I was working in that clothing store back in Peoria. I had more... You never told me you worked in a clothing store, McGee. I never told you about that. You never I... did, no. <laughs> well, sir, I was a clerk in this clothing store, see, specializing in sweaters and sport coats. I sold a guy a cashmere sweater and a check coat one day, and he gave me a check for the check coat, but he paid me cash for the cashmere. <laughs> Well, sir, when I give the cash to the bank cashier and chuck this chap's check on the counter for cashing, the cashier checked the cash in his ch check cashing account and double-checked the check against the check stubs and found the check checker had failed to check the ex-checker and there wasn't enough cash to cash the check I got for the check coat, so the chump chucked the check back to me and checked out the door. <laughs> This must be the guy. Remember now, we don't want to part of these books, Molly. Make him bid him up, see? All right, come in. Uh, good day. I'm looking for a Mr. Uh, Fibber McGee, incredibly enough. <laughs> Come right in, bud. I'm Fibber McGee. Uh, thank you. And this is my wife, Mrs. McGee. How do you do, I'm sure. And uh, this is Dr. Gamble, bud, in case you ever want your appendix taken out and a scar left on your tummy that looks like you've been hit by a road scraper. <laughs> How do you do, sir? I've heard a lot about you, Doctor. I'm K. Stanley Flyleaf, the book collector. <laughs> oh, yes, I've heard of you, too. One of the country's leading bibliophiles. Let him show you his bibs and files later on. <laughs> we got business here. Uh, you are the gentleman who called me and said he had a selection of algers? Oh, yes, 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 he's the one, all right, sir. Uh, there they are, right there on the table. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, if you don't mind while I... Oh, sure, help yourself. Oh. Huh? These are not first editions. What? In fact, none of them is. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? They're Horatio Alger books, aren't they? Oh, certainly. But I can pick Algers like this up in any bookstore for three cents apiece. These are worthless. Oh. Oh, but he thought... I rather doubt it, madam. Right. And I'm sorry we wasted each other's time. Good day, sir. Good day, doctor. Good day. Been nice knowing you. Hey, watch out for that doorstop, bud. It's right in the door, you fall... Oh. Doors. Heavenly days. I'm so sorry, Mr. Flyleaf. 
Are you hurt? No, he isn't hurt, are you, Flyleaf? Are you hurt, Flyleaf? What's he staring at? That old book we've been using as a doorstop. What's wrong, bud? I say, why didn't you show me this? Why? This is a first edition of Uncle Tom's Cabin. Harriet Beecher Stowe. Very rare. Will you sell me this? Sell that? Of course not, bud. We need that book. We lean it against the door to hold it open whenever we don't want to... Oh, but it's worth $200, McGee. What? $200? Oh, just make out the check to F. McGee, bud. For that kind of dough, I'll lean against the door myself. I suppose I'm a little prejudiced, but I just don't understand how anyone could permit her kitchen linoleum or other floors to be anything but clean and bright and shining. It's so easy to make floors glow and gleam with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. There's no rubbing or buffing. All you have to do is apply and let dry. You'll be proud of that rich new floor beauty every time you walk across it. A shining coat of glow coat makes your floors easy to keep clean, too. Dust, dirt, and spilled things can be whisked away with just a wipe of a damp cloth. Johnson's self-polishing glow coat also protects your floors from wear and scuffing. That glowing protective wax coat can take an awful beating and still come up shining. Think about it for a minute, and then make up your mind to give your floors the added shining beauty that comes with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Try glow coat and enjoy the easy way to bring out the beauty of the home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the home. Oh, these Alger books are wonderful, McGee. Hmm? <laughs> Here's one about a boy who rescued a millionaire's baby from under the wheels of a horse car. Oh, that stuff's dated, Molly. You think so? Why, certainly. That rescue stuff's no good anymore. My gosh, I yanked a guy out from under the wheels of a ten-ton truck one time, and what did I get? A poke in the nose. A poke in the nose? Yeah. Heavenly days, why? Well, he was trying to change a tire, and I was the third guy that rescued him. Oh. <laughs> good night. Good night, all. <laughs> The makers of Johnson's Wax Products, Racine, Wisconsin, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly every Tuesday night. Be with us again next week, won't you? Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.